makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life, life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard, directed by Mac Benoff, and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum are glad to bring you life with Luigi because they feel it's a friendly, good-natured show that offers you relaxation and enjoyment. And you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum offers you relaxation and enjoyment, too. It's pleasant to chew on a smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint whether you're working, shopping, listening to your radio, or doing just about anything. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum tastes good. It's refreshing. And the good, easy chewing gives you comfort and satisfaction. Now, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum brings you Luigi as he writes another letter describing his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in Italy. Dear Mamma Mia. In America, they got a five seasons. A winter season, a fall season, a spring season, a summer season, and a worst season of all, income tax season. <laughs> right now is income tax season. That's the time when everybody is busy figuring out how much money they got to send to the government, how much they're going to live on, and what they got left. But to me, I'm going to try to be extra good American. I'm going to wait for March 15th. Last January 1st, I make out my income tax and I send it right in. I'm got empty pockets three months before everybody else. <laughs> but I'm got a good reason for not to send in my money so fast, Mama Mia. It's because I'm no one to be guilty of what's called with the holding the tax. <laughs> By the time you receive this letter, Mama Mia, that's going to be your birthday again. Happy birthday, Mama Mia. I only wish I, 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 I can send you silver candlesticks, I promise you, when I left for the old country to come to America. But, well, is, uh, is it going to have to wait for a little while? Anyway, I'm going to close you fine a birthday card, which I'm buying a store specially for you. They don't have the kind of card I want, but you know with us, the feeling is a counter more than anything else, so don't look at what it's to say, Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Anyway, I'm still going to try to get something nicer for you, Mamma Mia. But right now, I'm leaving my antique shop for my night school class. Uh, hello, Mr. Basco. Got a registered letter for you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Post Office. <laughs> oh, Mr. Basco, uh, uh, you got any new stamps from Italy for my kid? <laughs> no, but when I get some, I'm going to save it for you. Oh, thanks. Hey, this letter is to say, Internal Revenue Department. What's that? Trouble. Trouble, Dear Mr. Basco, an internal revenue agent will call to see you tomorrow, 4 p.m., in reference to your 1951 tax return. Mamma mia, what do they want from me? I go right to now ask my night school teacher, Miss Spalding. Oh, All right, class, let's come to no. attention. Oh, I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Present. Mr. Horowitz? Present. Mr. Olson? Present. Mr. Schultz? Mr. Schultz, you're here. Aren't you going to say anything? What is that to say? I'm here, and that's all. <laughs> Please, Mr. Schultz. Now, class, our lesson for today is on government. Who can tell me the three main branches of our government? Hey, I can't teach you. Good. What are they? Main branch, uptown, and downtown. <laughs> No, Mr. Schultz, that's completely wrong. That's not even anywhere... All right, all right, so don't rub it in. <laughs> uh, will someone else volunteer to answer that question? The three main branches of the government. Now, if you recall, I gave you a simple formula for remembering it. Think of Washington and three branches of one tree. I'm spelling uh, I try. Fine. Uh, the, the three branches, huh? Yes. Legislative, executive... Uh, Executive, uh, executive... Luigi, get off that branch before you break the tree. <laughs> please, please, Mr. Schultz. Legislative and executive are correct, Mr. Basco. Now, I'll give you a hint. The third department has to do with courts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I remember. 
a legislative, executive, and a, and a ju, a ju, 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 judicial. <laughs> well, that's perfect, Mr. Basco. For that, you get a good mark. Never mind the good mark. Give Luigi a refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Schultz, please. Oh, yes, Mr. Olson? Uh, the legislative department is to make the laws. The executive department is to carry out the laws. The judicial department is to try the laws in court. Well, that's very good, Mr. Olsen. Yo, I, I stayed up real late last night, Miss Spaulding, and I studied very hard. And that's why I always answer your questions right. Ooh, what a show-off. I hate a man who knows everything. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Spaulding... Yes, Mr. Basco? I'm, I'm, I'm like to ask you something... Uh, something... Uh, well, a little while ago, I'm, I'm received this letter from, from Internal uh, uh, Revenue Department. Ah, Internal Revenue Department. That's bad. Why didn't you pay your income tax? No, I should say. I, I, I'm going to pay my tax in January. That's, that's uh, two months ahead of the time. That's even worse, Luigi. They suspect you if you're too anxious. <laughs> California Limited leaves it for Jump on it. Mr. Schultz, please. They do not suspect you, Mr. Basco. The government is very grateful to anyone who sends in his tax money before the big rush. Well, if they're grateful, Miss Spalding, then, then, then why the government is sending a special amount to see me tomorrow? Uh, Luigi, uh, maybe they want to thank you for being an early bird. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, if they want to thank me also, then, then why they don't send me a letter of thanks? So why are they sending a man? I'll tell you why, Luigi, because they can't fit handcuffs into an envelope. <laughs> For me, Luigi. Oh, 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 my rheumatism. Oh, oh, listen to me, Luigi. Oh, oh, I couldn't get thirty dollars for my body on a used car lot. <laughs> I shall say. Yeah. Shall say the, the income tax man is coming tomorrow at four o'clock. You think he's going to make a trouble for me? Ah, oh, my Luigi. Maybe you you just made a little mistake and nothing will happen. You, you know what happened when I first came to America? I, I sent in my first income tax without anything written on it. Why? Because on the top it said, return this income tax blank. <laughs> oh, now smile, Luigi. I'm trying to make you laugh. Yeah, but it sure says, is there going to be some birthday present for my mom if she's to find out I'm in trouble with the government? Ah, don't worry, Luigi. Smile. What can they do to you? Can they take away your money? Can they take away your clothes? Can they take away your business? Sure, can they? Tomorrow night you'll know if you ain't got it, they took it to me. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi, hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. Ooh, that's the matter for you, Luigi. You're walking around like a chicken with its tail between its legs. <laughs> Pasquale, it's a long story. You see, I'm going to get a letter from income tax department that say man is coming to antique shop tomorrow. So I'm going to take it tonight to school for help. Miss Spalding, as she says, there's nothing to worry about. It. But also, as I say, maybe trouble and the Schultz is... He's a maker of sound even a worse. Sure, she'll go to everybody but your friend who's to bring you from the older country, Pasquale. Luigi, why are you always running around every place for information when you could come right here and get the dope? <laughs> are you so right, Pasquale? Nobody's a bigger dope than you. <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I say it, it's a come out of different. <laughs> Luigi, you always are going to have a trouble with tax department because you ain't got what they call uh, dependent. Dependent? And what's that? Dependent? Uh, that's something a fellow's a married, so he should pay less in taxes. Oh. oh, I didn't know. Now I'm going to show you. I'm your best friend, Luigi. I'm going to give you one of my dependents a free of charge. <laughs> oh, you will, Pasquale? Who? My daughter Rosa. <laughs> What do you say, Luigi? No, Pasquale. Rosa's is too fat for me. <laughs> so what if she's away 250 pounds? You marry an ordinary girl, you got a one dependent. You marry Rosa, right away you got two dependents. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, please, don't talk about Rosa. Just to tell me, why is the income tax man going to come to see me? <laughs> why they come to see anybody? To get more money. 
Tell me, my big business man, how much money you send the government in January? Ten dollars. Ten dollars? That's your trouble. You violating a very big law, the uh, uh, e pluribus unum tax. <laughs> E pluribus unum tax? Sure, sure. For men, is the e pluribus unum. For ladies, is the she pluribus unum. <laughs> yeah, but Pascali, if this is American law, why is it written in a foreign language? Because it's especially for foreigners. They got to pay you extra hundred dollars. Hundred dollars, Mamma mia, Pasquale. When does the law was passed? Uh, uh, just a half hour ago. <laughs> Sure, didn't you hear it on your radio? No, I didn't hear it. Oh, so no wonder you ain't got FM. FM? Sure. That's the mean they broadcast all about a foreign money. <laughs> you, you, your radio is, is AM. That's the mean they broadcast only about American money. <laughs> yeah, but Pascal, what am I going to do? I'm... How many got a hundred dollars to, to, to pay this, uh, this, this, this unum tax? Well, I'm not such a bad fella. You know, Pasquale's got a big heart, always taking care of people he's like. <laughs> Luigi, I'm ready to give you a hundred dollars and keep you out of Alcatraz. <laughs> All you got to do is a Mary Rosa. What do you say, my son? Pasquale, where is the Alcatraz? <laughs> All right, go ahead. Be stubborn. You ain't got no credit in the bank. Where are you going to get the hundred dollars? Well, I'm... I'm going to go to the loan company. I read advertisement and all the papers are to say, we'll lend you money. All you need is a co-signer. Well, I'm going to get a shoot, so he's going to sign it for my co. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Get Schultz. See what I... Uh, uh, loan company, eh? <laughs> Luigi, there's no hard feeling between us. What do you want Schultz for? I'm your best friend. I'll sign it for you. Oh, Pascal, you do this for me? Sure, sure. I know a fine loan company, the Happy Finance Company, uh, Dearborn Street, 800 block. You go down the first thing in the morning, I'm going to take care of everything for you right now. Now, go ahead. Take a little walk, my boy. Stop worrying. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pascal. You're a real friend. Sure. Goodbye, Pascal. Goodbye, goodbye. <laughs> Abro figaro, bravissimo. Abro figaro, bravissimo. Fortissimo, fortissimo. Hello? Happy Finance Company? <laughs> a fellow by the name of Luigi Basco is coming in tomorrow for a loan. I'm his co-signer, so give him all the money he's asked for. A hundred, a thousand, even a million dollars. I'm good for it. <laughs> oh, pardon me, I've got to hang up for now. My keeper is coming for me. What? Huh? What's my name? Uh, Pasquale, but around here, everybody's calling me Napoleon. A peep, peep. <laughs> We'll return to life with Luigi in just a few moments. In the meantime, you know, friends, clean, bright teeth and a winning smile are mighty important in making a good impression on people. That's one reason it's such a good idea to chew a few sticks of delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum every day. You see, chewing is more than just a pleasant pastime. When you sink your teeth into a piece of Wrigley Spearmint gum, the natural chewing action helps cleanse your teeth, helps keep them looking bright and attractive. In this way, chewing Wrigley Spearmint may help to improve the appearance of your smile. And that's a real advantage to you in your business or social life. So do what millions do. From time to time, every day, chew a stick of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum. Get a few packages and always keep some handy. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, although in the come a taxi man is a come this afternoon to see me, I'm not this so worried because I'm going to the loan company to buy a hundred dollars. Everything is a depend on the salon, so I'm going to fix myself up to look like a real rich man. I'm going to wear for the first time what you gave me when I left the home. The blue earmuffs and the red tablecloth. <laughs> tablecloth is going to make a nice muffler. 
Also, I'm going to get a haircut. It's going to cost me 20 cents. And I'm biting my fingernails all nice and even. <laughs> also, Barbara is selling me special perfume. Very expensive. It's going to cost me 10 cents a half a milk bottle. <laughs> oh, Mamma Mia, believe me when I say, with my haircut, the shave of my nails and my smell, nobody we ever bury does it look so good. Well, Mamma Mia, I'm going to have to go now and I get the money for the government. Uh, excuse me, please. Uh, it's uh, the Happy Financial Company, no? That's right. Well, I'm coming to make a loan from you. My name is Luigi Basco. I... Basco? Say, were you recommended by your friend, Mr. Pasquale? Yeah, that's right. I'm going to get outside. <laughs> I think I was a pushed. <coughs> no, please, please, Mr. Ma Maybe you had the wrong... I was uh, talking about a fellow who's a guarantee this loan for you. What did you say his name was? Pasquale. <laughs> this time I'm sure he's uh, pushing me out. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe Pasquale is uh, not helping me. He's, he's a throw monkey in my ranch. And... <laughs> oh, Mamma mia, that, that was the last chance to get $100 for a pluribus unum tax. What am, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do? I don't... I know... I know, I'm going to go right to down to income tax department. I'm going to wait for them to come to get me. I'm going to give them myself up. <laughs> Mamma mia, it's a... Hey, what the big building. On the top is a say, Treasury Debt. Such a big building, it's just for that. Must be everybody is in a debt to the treasury. <laughs> well, Luigi, you always a good citizen to take your courage in your hands and go inside and explain everything to them. And I'm supposed to pay $100, I'm only pay $10, and $90 a short. Hmm, well, look at all, the, all of those girls, how hard they're working. And all the people is rushing around there. They must have been turning the whole place upside down and looking for my ninety dollars. <laughs> uh, partner, please, uh, Mister Sarah. Yes. I'm Luigi Basco. I give up. Uh, what? It's no use to look for the money. You want to find it. Why not? I'm not to send it. What are you talking about? Please, uh, Mister Taxman, take a look at this uh, fine overcoat. This has got a real beaver collar with a pearl of buttons. It was uh, my uncle Pietro's. Uh, tell me, how much you think is it worth? Uh, well, I'd say about ninety dollars. Ninety dollars. Take it. Uh, we're even up. What? Goodbye and uh, God bless you. Hey, wait, 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 come here, come here, mister. Look, I don't want this coat. I think you're all mixed up. Now, just who are you looking for? Who am I? In the come attack, Samantha, you know the end? No, look, just go to room 202, right over there. Oh, thank you. Yes? Can I help you? Oh, look, Mr. Taxman, I'm, I'm got a lot of trouble with my tax. Well, see? everybody does. I'll try to help you. Now, did you make out a long form or a short form? I'm going to remember it was about the ten inches along as six inches. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now, no, when you filled out your form, do you remember, was it a 1040? I'm not too sure, but, but I think it was a closer to 12 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, never mind that. Did you use a tax table? Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm use a plan of kitchen table. <laughs> well, mister, let's, let's use this form as an example. Now, did you fill out something like this? Oh, that's the one. Yeah, that's it. Right. Okay, that's the one. okay. Now, are you a worker or are you in business? Well, I'm a worker, but it's not too much a business. <laughs> well, that, that's not what I... <clears throat> let's take item two. Income. Now, just how much did you say you took in? $800. Eight? Eight? You were in business and you made $800 all year? Did you tell the truth? To tell the truth? I'm, I'm a didn't to tell the truth. Well, $800 isn't what you took in. How much did you take in? I'm only taking it $400. I'm ashamed to put down a so little. <laughs> that sounds very good, but I warn you, the department checks on everything. I don't know why people have trouble figuring out their tax. It's all down in black and white. Here, I'll read it. 
If your income was less than $500, you may find your tax in the tax table on page 4. This table, which is provided by law, automatically allows about 10% of your total income for contributions, interest, taxes, casualty losses, medical expenses, and miscellaneous. But if your expenditures and losses of these classes amount to more than 10%, it will be advantageous to itemize them and compute your tax on page 3. Do you understand that? Huh? <laughs> Liz, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I, I'm li- like to ask you one question. Certainly, go ahead. Do do, do you understand that? <laughs> <laughs> Let's read it again. All right. <laughs> if your income was less than exactly, what did you come here for? Well, uh, Mr. Taxman, I'm gonna receive this letter. Well, let's see. It might be a clue. Hey. Mister, you better go right home. An internal revenue agent is coming to talk to you in about a half hour. Yeah, I'm a know that. That's a, that's why I'm a coming to see you. Please, I'm I'm, I'm always trying to be a good American citizen. What the government is going to do to a man who's no pay the taxes? <laughs> <laughs> Mamma mia, what the kind of punishment is? <laughs> <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. What's the matter, little cabbage puss? You didn't get your loan? I mean, I can't understand why. Well, it's the worst than that, Pasquale. Well, I'm, I'm a got income tax department. And a manager mixing me up with a shorter form, a longer form, at 10 or 40 o'clock. I'm a tell him a kitchen, a table, and he says it's a tax department. And then we have argument, and, and then... Pasquale, what do you think he's a say? What? <laughs> That's the matter with you, Luigi. That's the matter. You swallow a nanny goat? Pasquale, I'm going to swallow nothing, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm in the most terrible trouble of my life. I, I think I'm going to disgrace everybody. American government, because I'm not going to pay my tax. And, and my mom, Mamiya, because, because I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to send a birthday present. It's quite everything is no good. It's, a, it's a useless. Everything is a useless. I'm not even got a friend. Oh, what do you talk, Luigi? Don't talk like this, no got a friend. You got a me. I'm the most useless friend you got. <laughs> now, look, you stop worrying because I'm going to pay you tax and I send your mom a nice birthday present. I'm not... Oh, Pascal, you, you, you going to do all of this for me? Sure, little banana nose. <laughs> Pack up your troubles and your old bag and a smile. For anybody who's a my son-in-law, I'm all the money bags of Pasquale. <laughs> Money's going to flow like a wine. Pasquale. Huh? And a what's for somebody who's not to your son-in-law? Pepsi-Cola. <laughs> Well, what's it going to be your pleasure? Disgrace or Mary Rosa? Remember, revenue man's are going to be here in a minute. Come on, speak up. Well, well, all right, the push, Molly. Oh, 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 you're making me so happy. Luigi, you're a real fine Italian boy. You ask the father's permission before you run away with the girl. <laughs> all right, Luigi, I'm going to call in the happy bride. Rosa! 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 Call me, Papa! Yes, come here, my little pigeon. Say hello to Luigi. (laughs) Hello, Luigi! (laughs) Hello, Rosa. Well, Luigi, you ready to fly away with Rosa? How am I going to get her off the ground? We're going to make plans for the honeymoon now. Uh, I'm Mr. Wallace from the Treasury Department. I'm looking for Mr. Basco. Is he here? <laughs> that, uh, that's me. It's all right. All right, Mr. Treasury Department. I'm going to take care of everything. Uh, Luigi, you and Rosa, go in the kitchen and uh, bake a cake. Go on. I, I'm going to pay all your taxes. A pay? Uh, just, just a minute, Mr. Basco. I'd like to talk to you. Uh, you know, ordinarily, when there's a tax discrepancy, we send out a letter. But in this case, we decided to contact you personally. Well, I know, but... 
coming up play my in the pluribusy on my taxi. Luigi, go bake. <laughs> what? Mr. Basco, there's no such thing as an e pluribus unum tax. Has it a... What? A revenue man is right, Luigi. A half hour ago, this tax law was repealed. <laughs> but, Basco, uh, where you find this out? On AM or, or uh, FM? Television. <laughs> now, go on, Luigi. Go. You want to run? No, no, just a minute, please. I'd like to finish my business here. Uh, Mr. Basco, you don't owe the government any money. We owe you money. Here's a check for the $10 you overpaid. I'm, I'm going to get the money back. Ha, <laughs> ha. Imagine Luigi's overpay as a tax. That's a stupid thing. Eh? But what the dick? He's a good-hearted little fella. <laughs> you know something? If I, Pasquale, was to get the money back from the government, I like this little fella so much, I'd give him every penny. Oh, are you Pasquale of Pasquale's Spaghetti Palace? Yes, well, I was just about to contact you, Mr. Pasquale. Me? me, me. Say, uh, who makes out your income tax? Uh, Why, uh, you overpaid your income tax, too. I've got a check for you for $40. What? Pasquale. Uh, 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 Mr. Pasquale, I'm, I'm taking you at your word. Here you are, Mr. Basco, Mr. Pasquale. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pasquale. Hey, wait, Luigi, 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 wait, where are you going? Come Dubai, back to my Dubai, Dubai, Plutobasi Unum. And <laughs> so, Mom. I mean, everything has come out to find it with income a taxi department. I'm still got a papa's overcoat uh, that he gave it to Uncle Pietro. And the best of all, uh, for your birthday, I'm sending you a separate package with a pair of, of, of silver candlesticks. You like them, huh, Mamma Mia? You see, I'm keeping my promise. And, and, and if you see a couple of tears on this page, don't you think it's, it's uh, me crying? That there was a Pasquale when he's a pay for the candlesticks. <laughs> well, Mamma Mia, happy birthday. You can't hear me singing while I'm writing this, but I'm a singer just the same. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Mamma. Excuse me, Mamma, while I'm a turn of the page. Mia. <laughs> happy birthday to you. He eleven his son, Luigi Basca, Lily Magranta. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you that Wrigley's Spearmint Gum is a refreshing treat you can enjoy while you're doing other things. Wrigley's Spearmint Gum always tastes good, and you can chew and enjoy it even when you're working with your hands. There's lots of lively, real spearmint flavor in it to freshen your taste and sweeten your breath. Besides, the chewing itself gives you satisfaction. It makes the time pass more pleasantly, makes your work and other activities go a bit smoother. So enjoy chewing delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum often during the day. It's satisfying, it's refreshing, and it makes whatever else you're doing more enjoyable. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to be sure to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production. Pat Burton is associate producer. The script is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Derman and directed by Mr. Benoff. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz, and Ken Peters as Olsen. The music is on the direction of Lud Gluskin, Mrs. Charles Lyon, Mr. CBS Radio Network. <laughs>